Hey everybody, it's Melissa Ramos and I wanted to be able to give you this little video for my blog because I just think it's really important for you guys to understand about some of the preservatives that you're actually seeing in your food. In fact, you might think that these really big long names just might sound super confusing, but in essence, they're doing some pretty harmful things to our body and making our insides toxic. So I'm going to be giving you a rundown of 10 uh, preservative foods and what you need to know. So according to government standards, natural flavoring doesn't necessarily mean that it comes from fresh berries or recently picked produce. And we know this, um, especially in the book of um, Fast Food Nation. And I was trying to actually find the part, but it was the part where they were speaking a lot about um, natural flavorings and artificial flavorings and how natural really isn't natural. Um, they're both a form of processing. So when you see natural flavorings on a package or strawberry flavorings or something like that, just know that there is nothing natural about it. Natural flavorings can, come, can be made up just about anything that comes from a natural source, including animal excretions. Now that's really, really disturbing when you actually consider that animal poop could be a part of natural flavoring. So there's nothing really natural about it unless you consider poop something natural. Now you may quickly overlook many of these hard to pronounce names, but you should also be aware, as I was saying to you, that these items make up a lot of items that you don't eat, like jet fuel. Jet fuel, and we're gonna be seeing how absolutely astounding this is. So ammonium sulfate, it's found in bread. I mean, does ammonium sulfate even sound healthy to you? It's mixed with yeast and manufacturers call it a roll. So, you know when you've got those cute rolls and it makes bread? Well, ammonium sulfate's actually pretty bad for you, but it makes the yeast more active. Essentially, it makes the yeast happy. So it provides yeast with nitrogen, making the bread more active. So it's, that's what I kept seeing online was it makes yeast happy. So it essentially makes your bread super duper fluffy. The next one is L-cysteine. It's amino acid, right? Well, yeah, that's what we would figure is that this sounds completely natural, but hold up. It's made from duck feathers or human hair and considered a natural protein since it's digested as an amino acid. There's your ducky. Now it's interesting to note because Jamie Oliver in the Food Revolution, um, he was asking um, children, you know, to stir up this ice cream with a bunch of feathers in it because he was trying to make the point that the things like ice cream has L-cysteine in it. And while it is an amino acid, it's actually made or taken, derived from a source like duck feathers or even human hair. Does it sound appetizing to you now? So again, it's used in ice cream, but also in bread and even cookie dough. Then you have titanium dioxide. Now, I actually posted this on my Facebook fan site wall, a little bit about this, but so found in things like milk, salad dressings, frostings, coffee creamers, mayonnaise, cosmetic, toothpaste, and more. And these aren't things that we just have, you know, every couple of days. Things like toothpaste are things that we as a society, use every single day. So if you're using commercial toothpaste, understand that titanium dioxide is in there. It accounts for 70% of the total volume of pigments worldwide. And according to the American Cancer Society, they've listed titanium dioxide among the five most carcinogenic substances on the planet. It's contributing to a factor of asthma, cancer, kidney disease, Alzheimer's, and infertility. So if you are consuming some of these products, then definitely look at the label and think again. Then butylated hydroxytoluene, God, I can't even pronounce it. It's BHT for short. This is the sister of BHA. So it essentially, it prevents oils in food from going rancid. So it's found in things like cereal. Now I worked in the cereal industry for years and it's in cereal and I just always think, wow, this is, a food that is preserving this food so it doesn't go bad. But then you look at your cat food and your cat food is preserved with vitamin E. So who's getting the better wrap here? But it's also found in cosmetics, cereals, children's Advil, granola bars, jet fuel, rubber, and embalming fluid. In fact, BH 
T and BHA also resulted in peritoneal and pleural hemorrhage in rats. And this is really scary because while this is in rats, it's also showing that it has a huge effect on the system, on, on a living system, including ours. And also what BHT does is it also slows down the rate of oxidation. So think of oxidation if you're wondering what that means. Oxidation is, say for example, you bite into an apple and then you leave it out on the counter and the apple goes brown. Well, that's because the apple is oxidizing. Well, BHT also helps certain foods from oxidizing as well. Not apples per se, but various foods, it will help it from oxidizing. Um, but again, it pervert, preserves, prevents those oils in the food from going rancid. So again, if you're a cereal monkey, then take a look at that package of yours and check out if it has BHT. Sodium benzoate. It's used in acidic liquids like vinegar, juices, and soft drinks. It's also found in margarine and fast food burgers. Now, I'm a huge, if you know me, you know that one of my biggest weaknesses is I love a good burger, but I'm also a huge stickler on either I make my own or I go to a local burger joint where there's hormone and antibiotic free. So I'm really, really careful of where I purchase my burgers. It's also used in fireworks and it makes great rocket fuel. It preserves food by giving it antifungal properties. Now, just going back to the soft drink thing, you know when you drink a soft drink, you've got that tingling sensation in your throat? Well, sodium benzoate is actually what's making that tingling sensation in your throat. Essentially, it enters cells in food, and it increases the overall acidity in foods. So it's used in soft drinks along with that uh, high fructose corn syrup to actually magnify the flavor. But also look to see on the back of packages to see if it's listed as E211. Potassium bromate. It's found in bread products because it actually helps bread hold together. It's found specifically in enriched products. So when you see like enriched breads and an enriched, you know, um, any sort of enriched bread products, know that potassium bromate is likely on the package. Thankfully, this is now legal in Canada, but Americans, you're not off the hook because it's still found in many of your processed foods across the U.S. And the sad thing is, is that it was found to cause cancer in mice. So there's a reason why it's illegal now in Canada, and hopefully the U.S. can bind together and be able to outlaw it there as well. The interesting thing is, is that in the States, there's another, uh, you know, um, type of processed food junk thing, and... I want to be able to mention this because this is not actually legal anywhere else in the world except for the States. And it's an oil called Olestra. Olestra is found in bags of chips and so forth, but the side effects of Olestra is that it causes anal leakage. It doesn't sound too appetizing. Well, the next time, Americans, if you go for a bag of chips or anything that's sort of fried, fatty, check out for Olestra and just be really careful. Then, of course, there's gum. So if you're looking for gum, acelfamine K is an artificial sweetener that is 200 times sweeter than sugar. It's found in baked goods, chewing gums, gelatin desserts, soft drinks, and energy drinks. In fact, two animal studies suggest that this additive could be cancer-causing. It also breaks down into a substance, acetocetamine, um, acetamide, I'm sorry I can't pronounce these, that in large quantities have been found to affect the thyroid in dogs, rabbits, and cats. And watch for it in foods that use sucralose, an artificial sweetener, because it's often used in conjunction with it. So if you are a gum chewer, be very careful. Then we have erythrocene, which is red dye number three. It's found in cherries, candy, baked goods, and pistachio shells. It's actually made from coal tar. And it causes hyperactivity and thyroid tumors in rats. So mothers out there, if you have children and your child is suffering from ADD, be very careful of a lot of these food preservatives, especially these dyes that are found in foods like lollipops and, you know, um, sweets and candies and so forth, because that is a huge contributing factor to hypertension deficit disorder. And according to the World Health Organization, erythrocene intake in Canada 
believe it or not, was 10 times higher than in either U.S. or Japan. Canadians, what are we doing? And of course we got this. Benzoic acid. It's found in processing foods like cheese, varying sauces, meats, and cosmetic products. If inhaled, it can damage the nervous system. It's linked with asthma and hyperactivity in children. Kind of makes you wonder when moms are making grilled cheese sandwiches with this processed cheese product because Believe it or not, these wrapped cheeses that you find in the stores from varying companies, I won't list what companies these are. Um, actually, I will. Companies like Kraft and, you know, they've got the generic versions and so forth. They have these products. And the problem is, is that mothers are making grilled cheese sandwiches for their children. And this is linked with asthma and hyperactivity. Makes you kind of wonder. Now, every single year, manufacturers will always try to find out um, how to make the same product with cheaper ingredients so that they can earn a higher profit. Now, I know this firsthand from being um, previously an advertising executive and going to offsite meetings and remember seeing two uh, piles of duo tanks when I went there to visit the marketing team and, you know, the, the team from these big packaged food industries. And I'm like, why is there an agency pile and one, why is there a pile for the processed food company that I'm advertising? This is in my previous life, of course. And I realized when I picked up my duo tank from the agency that there was all these areas that were blacked out. And the reason why they were blacked out is because the ingredients that they use are highly confidential. But again, they're, the food scientists are always trying to figure out how do we manufacture a product with cheaper ingredients so that the company overall can make a higher profit. Makes you wonder. So there you have it, guys. That is your 10 preservatives of food preservatives and what you need to know. I hope you found this super helpful. They are creating a ton of toxic havoc, hormonal havoc, digestive havoc. They're led to cancer, all different kinds of horrible imbalances in the body. And I wanted you to be well aware of it. Thanks, everyone, and take care. Bye-bye.